Well, it goes deep. A large part of the conflict goes back to the decision of the United States, first by George W. Bush, 2008, then reaffirmed by Obama, to invite Ukraine to enter NATO. Now, no Russian leader is likely to accept that. Uh, Ukraine is far too great uh, geostrategic significance and also historical significance and cultural significance to Russia for Russian leaders, uh, Putin or anyone else, to accept uh, incorporation of Ukraine within a hostile military alliance. Long background to this. Now, this effort by the United States was vetoed by France and Germany, but that didn't mean anything. The United States proceeds with it. Uh, now, there is an agreement, the Minsk II agreement. It's France, Germany, Russia, and Ukraine. If the terms of that agreement were implemented, the crisis would be dampened. It probably would not be taking place. Now, neither uh, Ukraine nor uh, Donbass, the Russian region, have implemented the agreement. The United States has not pressed Ukraine to implement the agreement. So there's problems on all sides. But if Europe had a really independent role in world affairs, it could be uh, uh, acting in such a way as to bring this Minsk II agreement into operation. That would probably resolve the crisis. Uh, there's very good scholarship on this. One of the main uh, scholars of the region, Anatoly Yevin, has just written several articles about it pointing out in detail how implementation of Minsk II could very likely resolve the crisis. Of course, that would mean withdrawal of the US call for Ukraine to join NATO. It would mean that Ukraine would have sort of Austrian-style neutrality, the kind that Austria had right through the Cold War not part of any military alliance. Uh, the, uh, uh, it would mean that there'd be federal, some kind of federation in Ukraine, which would provide degree of autonomy to the Donbass region, uh, demilitarization, a couple of other conditions. All of this is quite feasible, and it's very likely that it would simply end the crisis. Uh, it's not what's happening. Uh, the United States, under strong internal pressure from right-wing and also centrist opinion, is moving to towards uh, intensifying the crisis. So is Putin by putting troops surrounding Ukraine, 100,000 of them. So it could, it's, uh, as uh, Yevin himself says, this is the most dangerous crisis in the world right now and also the most easily settled, it's both. Uh, now this goes back much farther to the question of the means by which NATO was expanded. You go back to the collapse of the Soviet Union, there were several conceptions of how the Eurasia region should be organized. One of them, which was advanced by Mikhail Gorbachev, and by Germany, Hans Dietrich Genzer, the uh, uh, German foreign minister, both of them proposed uh, a kind of a Eurasian security system with no military blocks. Okay, so Lisbon, the Vladivostok, singles a region, no military blocks. Well, that was rejected by the United States, it was actually supported by Germany. A core part of this was unification of Germany, which the Germans, of course, wanted. And uh, uh, the question was how this could take place. I remember for Russia, 
unification of Germany is not a trivial matter. Uh, Germany alone had virtually destroyed Russia several times during the past century. So for Russia to agree, as Gorbachev did, to agree to allowing Germany to be unified within NATO, hostile military alliance, was quite a concession. But there was a condition. Condition was that uh, NATO would not expand to the east. Uh, the phrase that was used was not one inch to the east. That meant East Germany. Nobody was contemplating broader expansion, at least in public, maybe privately they were. Uh, well, uh, uh, NATO did advance to East Germany under Bush and under Clinton, it moved all the way to the Russian border, uh, Baltic states, uh, other states, the Balkan states. Uh, this is this is a pretty, I mean, it could have been done in a way which would have eliminated, certainly eased tensions. There was what was called the Partnership for Peace in the 1990s, which was a pretty sensible approach that contemplated expanding NATO or another general alliance to include the East European states, but to do it in stages with varying from country to country, depending on the circumstances, taking Russian concerns into consideration, even uh, contemplating bringing Russia itself into this system, as incidentally Putin has suggested. Uh, these were all possibilities. They were abandoned in favor of what was called the Clinton Doctrine. Let's just expand militarily right to the border of Russia, and militarizing, bringing them into NATO, uh, weapon systems that are called defensive, but of course threaten Russia. Uh, that all of this was done in a manner which was almost guaranteed to increase tensions. We're now facing it. Ukraine is a central part. Uh, the uh, And what's happening, as Levin correctly says, is extremely dangerous, but also has a solution, one in which Europe would play a central role. But that, of course, requires that Europe take up the option, which has already always had, to become an independent force in world affairs. Europe has that option, it's rejected it. It's chosen to be subordinate to the United States. And as long as Europe does that, we'll be in serious danger.